Hello and welcome to the video. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about some tips on how to survive in self-isolation. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Alex. I'm a stay-at-home, work-at-home mum of a two-year-old and uh, my husband is also working from home at the moment as well, full-time. So I guess as someone who both worked at home solo before my son came along for a little while and as someone who's been at home for the past couple of years as a stay-at-home mum, I feel like I've had to develop a few strategies for um, coping with a, a degree of isolation. Nothing like this, but a degree of isolation. And so I've just kind of been making sure to follow those tips and tricks that I've learned, but also adding a few extra. Not being able to go out at all, much at all, with this um, isolation thing is a different ball game. So without further ado, let's jump in. So my first tip is to get ready in the morning. So even though we're not necessarily gonna be going out anywhere, I always feel that when I take the time to just put on a little bit of light makeup and get dressed in the morning, rather than just sort of slobbing around because we're gonna be at home all day, it just sort of sets me up for the day to be more productive. I just feel more on top of things, more put together, and like I can face the day. My second tip is to make your bed. So this is one that I stand by all of the time, but again, making your bed is just such a simple action that makes you feel ready for the day and more sort of put together and like things are less chaotic. My third tip is to do the dishes, keep on top of the dishes and also keep on top of your housework. So just because you're um, stuck at home, not having visitors and maybe not feeling very motivated, I think that it helps to just live in a nice, clean environment and um, hey, it's something to do at the end of the day. My next tip is music and to have dance parties. So the other day I was feeling, woke up feeling a little bit tense about um, having to tackle another, another day of being sort of at home and think of activities and not being able to see people. I was feeling a little bit down. So I um, I gathered Lindsay and Jed in the lounge room and I just put on a really boppy song and we just danced and used Jed's instruments and just got it out of our systems. And I've been doing that a fair bit with Jed. So just dancing to lift, lift the mood, get the blood pumping, get those endorphins going. And that brings me to the next tip, which is to do a home workout. So most gyms are closed and you're also not allowed to go and use like outdoor gym equipment around here anymore. You are allowed to exercise outside, which is a fantastic idea. Another option is to just do a home workout at home. So I've been doing some Pilates and yoga um, pregnancy workouts because I'm in my third trimester. I've been streaming them from YouTube onto our TV and doing them with Jed in the morning and um, he kind of just like prances around me and jumps on me and makes it altogether more challenging to do. But it's something to do and it's a way to keep moving and something that makes me feel good about myself. There's all sorts of um, programs out there that you can get and many gyms are actually, I know, offering their services at home. So highly recommend just making time for some physical activity because those endorphins are going to make you feel um, so much better and be, be able to start the day feeling nice and fresh and energized. My next tip is if you can to try to get outside in particular if you can get outside in the sun that's even better. We are lucky in this part of the world that it is um, it is autumn, it's still very sunny, the weather's fine, we can go outside. I know it's not the case in all parts of the world and you know, depending if you live in a crowded city, I know some people um, have been completely locked down, unable to go outside. But if you can manage it at all, I think making time, making it a priority to get outside every day, get some vitamin D, which is really good for um, managing 
uh, like mood, you know, managing your mood, lifting your mood. So get outside, get your feet onto the grass, um, go for a swim in the ocean if that's available to you. And as well for the kids, um, I think it's so important for their mental well-being to be able to get outside and run freely and see different environments other than just within their backyard. So while I'm doing this video, um, Lindsay has actually taken Jed down to the river to just have a little run around and let off some steam and see something outside of these four walls because it must be really strange for the little ones as well to, to be in this situation. So we have to help them out as well. My next tip is to use technology to stay in contact with your friends. So there's all sorts of things popping up um, like house party or you can just do FaceTime. Something I'm trying to do is make actual arrangements. Like at, we can't have play dates at the moment. So instead of play dates, I'm sort of saying to my friends, let's have a um, FaceTime play date so the kids can see one another and have a quick catch up with friends. I think that, um, you know, one of the hardest things about this situation is being alienated and not having that human contact. So if you can still keep connected with your friends, I think that it's important to do so in whatever way that you can. My next tip is to plan your day ahead of time. I find that if I have a day and I haven't pre-thought about what I'm going to do, it usually just ends up being a home day where we're um, playing with the same things over and over and just running through the mill, which that's, that's fine to have days like that and we are meant to be staying at home. But um, I find when I put a little bit more thought into it, the days just seem to go better for me, I feel more on top of things. So when I have a little bit of a plan. So for example, tomorrow's Saturday and we are going to go for a drive to um, a beach where I know that there's not gonna be many people. We're gonna play on the sand, we're gonna have a swim, we're just gonna get out and about. So rather than wasting time in the morning, just flopping around, figuring out a plan, sometimes by the time you've made a plan, it's it's, I don't know, no one can be bothered or things pop up. So plan ahead. And even if you are having a day at home, sometimes I like to plan ahead and think, what craft activity can I do with, with Jed tomorrow? And that helps me to feel motivated the next day to do it. Whereas some days it's hard to sort of muster up that motivation in the moment. If you've kind of planned ahead, it helps you to get excited about the plan and know that you have a way to pass some time. And sort of on a similar note is to use this time, use this downtime to get some things done. Rather than sort of getting into a funk of just watching TV all day or being on social media, use the time to make a list of some things that you want to get done. It could be to start a little side business. It could be to get your photo albums done. It could be to, uh, I don't know, there, there's so many things it could be. Learn a new skill, whatever it is. Write, write a little list and use this time to get stuck into a project, which I think is going to um, just help you to have a bit more motivation and something something that you really look forward to doing hopefully a friend of mine is um, just recently bought a vintage caravan an old caravan from the 60s i think and she's been renovating that in her downtime because she's unable to work because of the business she is in so i would highly recommend getting stuck into some kind of project like that so my next tip is just about kindness so um, I think that this situation that we are all in presents lots of opportunities to be kind to other people. Um, and the thing about kindness is it's good for other people to reap benefit, benefits of it, but it also makes you feel fantastic. So it's a win-win situation. It can be something as super easy as just checking in with a friend and saying hey how are you going how are you finding everything how's your work situation how's it going with the kids just just check in with a friend and that will make your friend feel 
supported and give them an outlet to vent if they need to vent or just connect with someone and it will make you feel good because you have that connection and you know that you know your friends are okay and everyone's doing all right there's also um popping up things that you can do in your community like um uh, getting connected with older people in the community to see how you can help them out um, there's, there's, I'm sure there's lots of different opportunities the sky's the limit so um, yeah focus on giving something to others in some way and it will help you to feel better as well my next tip is to get stuck into a really good book so when you're stuck into a good book it's just sort of a way to escape reality it's so good when you're when you're in a really good book and you just really look forward to reading it and I think that's a great way to pass the time rather than just you know watching Netflix all the time a lot of it's gonna be hard to get to like bookshops and things like that and lots of libraries are closed but you could even do something like um, you could arrange a book drop with your friends so I have a friend that lives not too far away and she's lent me a couple of books I could go to her house and like drop a book out the front and vice versa and that'd give me a way um, some time to get out of the house like go for a drive get out of the house and and sort of a fun way to do um, a book exchange but you can also like if you don't have a kin if you have a Kindle you can obviously download books but I think you can you can do like ebooks through libraries and things like that as well um, if anyone wants a book recommendation uh, one of my favorite series is called the bronze horseman I recommend that one and I've read two good books recently one was called the um, oh my gosh I'm not gonna be able to remember it but I'm going to list a few good novels that I like below and authors and so if you need some suggestions you can have a look at that my next tip and I've got three more so this is the third last is to try and stay healthy ish so I'm the first to admit that my husband and I are making sure that our cupboard is well stocked with chocolate like no we're not gonna let ourselves be without chocolate during this crisis so okay that could be a side tip make sure you have chocolate or whatever you need to have but I would also say um, try and keep healthy so I uh, try to keep healthy particularly at the moment anyway because I am pregnant so trying to keep up with fruit and veg and what have you I'm by no means perfect but I do know that if I slipped into the um, slipped into the habit of just eating complete junk food because you know comfort food and all that you, you're not going to end up feeling very good about yourself so I'm not saying be a health nut or try and be perfect god knows I'm not but just try and um, crowd out the bad foods a little bit if you can by making sure that you are still stocking up on fruits and veg and um, and that type of thing uh, buy frozen berries and things like that when when our fruit supplies run a bit low towards um, after sorry when our food supplies start to run a bit low and we need to go grocery shopping I've just been getting into the frozen berries and stuff in the fridge and making smoothies and things like that on that note I don't want this to be like an endless plug of videos but I am making a video on meal planning and I'm probably gonna do a special one on meal planning when you're supposed to be self isolating so I will link that here and below when I make it hopefully in the next week or so okay my second last tip is to set if you know you're living with a partner or whatever is to set up a game of continuous scrabble or to get yourself a giant puzzle a thousand piece puzzle maybe you can order one online or something like that and if you have a spare space just set that up in a table just something that you can um, sort of go and do a few pieces of or go and think of a word to put down something like a continuous game is sort of fun and it'll help you to one have some different activity to do and help you to make sure that you're not always just doing the same old things in your downtime like being on your phone too much and 
and that type of thing unfortunately like i would actually love to do this but where the house we're living in is is really small we don't have a single space that we can do this but i wish we did because um my parents once had a giant puzzle set up at their house and i loved when i came over just doing a few bits and pieces and mum and i often used to do continuous scrabble so something i wish wish i could do but um anyway there's my tip for you guys my last tip is to make some you time and by that i mean if you're living with someone else whether that be a partner or children or both then try and make try and arrange some time just for you um i'm going to link my video above which was about self-care sunday so Lindsay and i are making a point of giving each other a couple of hours every weekend where we can do whatever we want so whether it's you might want to go off for a drive and listen to a podcast or just go for a drive with no agenda at all um go and read a book in an isolated park i don't know that's probably not allowed but um you might want to send your husband and kids out of the house to go for a big walk um, whatever it is i think that it is really important to give yourself a little bit of um time to yourself i'm used to having quite a bit of time to myself like when my son is napping during the day but now um lindsay's here all the time as well which is fine but i'm sure he feels the same you know we both need and crave our own space and i think that having that time for yourself is just just sort of helps you feel like you're not um sacrificing your full self you still have your you still looking after yourself because if you don't look after yourself if you don't prioritize yourself you're not going to be able to look after other people very well it could be just taking a time out to go and have a bubble bath if you can't get out of your house or just saying to your partner at night i hope you don't mind but tonight i'm just gonna go in the spare room and have a read or um just do so if you need to have time for yourself take that time for yourself um it's been it's it's a it's a silver lining of this situation that we are spending more time with our um, loved ones if we're living in the same house and things are usually busy that's a silver lining but at the same time don't feel like you don't deserve to have that time to yourself as well so anyway that brings me to the end of my list um i really hope that this has helped you in some way and if you have any extra tips that you want to add please i'd love to hear them because i have moments of struggle and hard hard times as well so please leave your tips below if you have any to add and thank you so much for watching and I hope hopefully see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.